Hello cats! Welcome back to another episode of Chat About That. I'm your host Bella and in this episode I'm going to be talking about the pandas at the National Zoo as well as a couple of other world updates. Before I begin chatting about the adorable pandas, I want to talk about Jacob Blake and the shootings in Wisconsin. On August 23rd, which was a couple of days ago, I'm recording this on August 27th, Jacob Blake, who is 29 years old, he's an African-American man, he was shot and hit in the back four times, but he was shot at seven times and he was hit four times in the back by police officers during an arrest. And he was tasered and there was a scuffle and he ended up becoming paralyzed because of this. And because of this, people have been protesting in that area and demanding justice. And like I've talked about, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Jacob Blake, these are not the only black people who have been targeted by police. And, you know, there have been countless others since Breonna and George. This incident with Jacob Blake incited a bunch of other protests in that area. And during a protest on August 25th, a white man, well, actually, he's a teenager, he's 17 years old, um, Kyle Rittenhouse, showed up at one of the protests with an R-15 rifle, and he was just casually walking around with this giant gun and he shot a bunch of people shot out a bunch of people and he ended up killing two the one victim was shot in the face the other victim ran up to kyle and he was trying to basically get him to stop and you know get him to leave the protest and he and he hit kyle and he fell to the ground and kyle shot the man in the chest and he was killed and then apparently he just walked by the cops and went home um And now I'm reading that he is facing multiple charges of first degree murder. This is, he should be in jail for this. This is absolutely disgusting that anybody can walk around with a military rifle and, you know, shoot a bunch of people and just go home and walk by the police and be free. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, And apparently he was taken into custody yesterday. So on August 26th, and he's facing um, first degree murder and homicide charges. Um... I mean, obviously, we'll see what happens. There tends to be a history of white men getting arrested and then, you know, having like no consequences. So we'll see what happens. But in my opinion, I think he should be in jail for the rest of his life. And so disgusting that someone can walk around with a gun like that. Um, I'm going to try to do some more research and keep up with the story because I'm hoping that he ends up in jail for the rest of his life, like I just said. But... Um, That's all I know about this currently. Um, Again, this is not the first time this has happened. This is unfortunately probably not the last time this is going to happen, but this is why we can't stay silent and we can't just act like there's nothing going on and why, you know, I want to mention these things in my podcasts because I have this platform and, and if I can share this information and help demand justice for all these victims then I feel like I'm doing my part. So that's all the information I have about this currently. And I'm going to keep up with the story and keep you guys informed for when his trial is and, you know, what's going on with all of that. So I just wanted to talk about that and let you guys know about that because protests are still going on. Black people are still being killed and white people are still getting away with all this shit. So that's all the updates I have for now about that. But I will let you know in future episodes more information about these cases. So on to some later content. I wanted to talk about the pandas at the National Zoo. If you don't know me, I probably have mentioned this in other episodes, but I love animals. I adore animals so much, especially pandas. Pandas aren't my favorite animal, but they're definitely up there. But if you didn't know, on August 21st, the giant panda gave birth and I've been keeping updated with this story and everything through the National Zoo. So in case you don't know what the National Zoo is, that is the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington, D.C. I've been there many times. It's a great zoo. There's lots of amazing animals there. And I wanted to talk about the history of the pandas and how they came to be at the National Zoo because I think it's a kind of interesting story. On August 21st, Mei Zhang, I think that's how you say the panda's name, um... 
we're just gonna call her mama panda mama panda gave birth to a little baby and i've been watching the panda cam if you don't know the national zoo has webcams for a couple of the different animals and one of them is for the giant panda so you can literally watch the giant panda interact with the baby i'm actually watching it right now she is holding her baby it's really cute um i think it's really fascinating watching the animal behavior animal behavior in general is very fascinating but especially when a mother interacts with their babies because some animals will give birth and abandon their babies right away and some will nurture them and stay with them for much longer once the panda is a year a couple years old then they'll start being more independent but currently for the meantime and probably a year or so the panda is going to be interacting with the baby. I'm currently watching this and she is, oh, I, oh, it's so cute. I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a video that just came out today on August 27th um, where the mama left the den for a while to go get some food and the baby's just like laying on the ground and squeaking and stuff. It's really cute. So that's not everything I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about the history of how these pandas came to be at the National Zoo. So we actually can thank Richard Nixon and Pat Nixon for the pandas. So if you don't know, obviously you know who Richard Nixon is, like Watergate and all that. Yes, he might have been crazy and no, maybe not the greatest president, but we can thank him for the pandas. Um, I also think he created the Environmental Protection Agency and he was the first president to bring Native Americans to the White House. So he did a couple of things. Oh, also Title IX, uh, which gave a lot of rights to women. So we can thank him for quite a few things. But in 1972, um, Pat Nixon, who is uh, who was Richard Nixon's wife. So Pat and Richard Nixon visited China. And this was a very big deal back then because of communism. And people were afraid to go to China, afraid to like interact with anyone from China. And they visited. And there's a famous picture of them getting off the plane. And Pat Nixon is wearing this red dress, which they associated communism with the color red. And so they went to go visit with uh, political heads in, in China. And during the trip, um, Pat Nixon mentioned how much she loved pandas. And I believe that she visited a zoo or a sanctuary over there. And she, you know, just mentioned how much she loved the pandas. And basically, China wanted to have better relations with the US. So they were like, hey, we're gonna just give you some pandas for your zoo. And so... In April, it was April 16th, 1972, um, the president and the first lady welcomed two giant pandas, a male and a female. And then within 20 years, um, they produced five cubs, but none of those cubs actually survived, which was very sad. But ever since then, the pandas have really symbolized this collaboration between the United States and China, which I think is really cool. I think that story is really interesting and really sweet. And it's a different side of the Nixons that we don't really talk about. You know, I did mention all those positive things that Richard Nixon did, uh, you know, earlier, but I think this really highlights, you know, how important this meeting was. So basically, ever since these pandas have been at the zoo the national zoo has you know had so many fans coming like millions of people have come all around the world to come see not only the zoo but the pandas as well and it's really allowed the people there to learn about the pandas and really just uh, up their knowledge and information about pandas um, because if the people that are working there don't have access to these certain animals or aren't able to observe their behavior, you know, up front, they're not going to be able to have that information. So this really allowed them to expand their knowledge on the pandas. And in 2000, the current uh, pandas arrived at the zoo. So Mei Zhang and Tan Tan or Tan Tan. I apologize for my horrible, um, my horrible pronunciation. Um, we'll just say mama and daddy panda. <laughs> they arrived um, and they're on loan. So China and the United States has this, basically this agreement where the pandas will be either on loan or when the babies are born, they'll be sent back. Um, so the most recent baby, Bebe, um, who was born, 
I think in 2016 or 2017, um, Bebe just went back to China. Um, so they have like, they can be at the zoo for four years before they go back. And I believe that agreement ends in 2021. So maybe this new baby will be here for a longer period of time. I'm not sure. With this agreement, the zoo contributes funds and expertise towards conservation efforts in China. And I'm getting all this information from the Smithsonian page, which I will link in my description. Um, there's a couple other resources I will put in the description. But most of this information I'm getting from this web page. And in 2011, David M. Rubenstein, Rubenstein donated $4.5 million to the zoo to fund the giant panda program all the way through 2016. So they've gotten a lot of funding and, you know, it's just a really cool... Um, program that we have. I really think cross-cultural collaboration is very important. It's, you know, a key to achieving world peace and not to sound like a like a beauty pageant, beauty pageant lady, but it's it's really important to achieve world peace and world, you know, world relations when we can have these communication efforts and these collaborations with other countries. I think it's very important, especially to do this through animals is it's really interesting because you know normally you see it's like trade agreements and you know peace treaties and that kind of stuff obviously I'm not I'm not versed in like history and that kind of stuff in politics but I think especially having this collaboration that has to do with animals I think is very interesting and they also have a science plan established with Chinese colleagues from the China Wildlife Conservation Association, which is really cool. So they're really just doing all these programs to promote this collaboration and everything, which I think is really awesome. So um, on this page, they have this timeline of the pandas. So basically, there have been two pairs of giant pandas that were... Um, you know, meant for breeding purposes. So the original ones were Ling Ling and Xing Xing. Again, I apologize for my pronunciation. Um, they were the first pair of pandas that were given. And then in 1983, they mated for the first time. And in 1983, Ling Ling gave birth to a male cub um, that unfortunately passed away. Um, they went on to produce more cubs. Like I said earlier, they had five five cubs that um, did not survive. So from 72 to 91, there were no surviving babies from these pandas, but the two pandas were there. And then Ling Ling unfortunately passed away in 1992. And then in 1999, Xing Xing uh, passed away as well. So from 72 to 99, again, just the two pandas were basically on display on not um, able to produce any offspring. But then the second pair in 2000, Mei Shang and Tian Tian, um, they have pronunciation, so I'm getting a little better. Um, they arrived at the zoo and those are the current, current pandas that are there. So Mei Zhang is the panda who just gave birth and that's the one that you can watch on the panda cam. And then in 2005, she gave birth to the first surviving panda cub. So it literally took from 1972 all the way to 2005 to have a successful birth with these panda cubs. And, you know, that just, you know, has to do with breeding and um, they artificially inseminated these pandas as well. I'm not sure if Again, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. Unfortunately, I'm not a panda scientist. <laughs> I wish I was. I wish that I worked at the um, panda sanctuary in China, which I'm going to talk about later. But uh, I'm not, I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not, um, you know, an expert on this. But the, basically, natural breeding has been unsuccessful for these pandas. So the pandas have been artificially inseminated. So 2005, um, Tai Shan was born. So 2005 was the first time that there was this, you know, successful attempt at breeding. And then in 2015, Bei Bei was born. So I was incorrect earlier. Bei Bei was born in 2015. And then um, she had a second surviving cub, Bao Bao. And uh, Bao Bao went back to China in 2017. And then Bei Bei went back to China in 2019. So there's only been a couple of successful um, births. And, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not a veterinarian, I'm not a scientist. Um, but it looked like I'm not going to read all of this information just because it's very sciencey, And I am going to put the 
article in the description, but it looks like they basically already officially inseminated the mom many times um, and there were a lot of complications, but there have been a couple of successful cubs. So I'm really hoping that this new baby survives all the way through infancy and um, is able to, you know, grow up healthy and live a long, happy life. Um, this agreement that they have with China ends in 2021. I believe it ends on 2021, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to be happening to these pandas after that. I'm hoping that they'll just keep them here uh, permanently. But I find this all to be very interesting. You know, again, with Pat and Richard Nixon, like, this is a really big deal. And, you know, especially with communism back then, to not only for them to go to China, but to maintain a really positive relationship with China and to have this program that has been going on since 72 like this relationship with China through these pandas and through this program has been going on for so long and again I think it's really fascinating to use animals especially such a positive symbol as the panda to create a relationship between different countries. I think it's really cool. Um, I don't know if other countries do this with animals or, you know, how many other animals have this type of program with the zoo, but I know that the giant panda is, you know, one of the most important animals at the Smithsonian Zoo. And, you know, I think it's just really fascinating to watch the behavior of the panda on the cam and see how they interact because... Like I've mentioned many times already in this podcast, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a veterinarian. I, I think I said I, was, I wasn't I was a panda scientist. I don't know what that means. But if I had merch, I think I would have a shirt that says not a panda scientist on it. That's a good idea if I ever have merch. I wonder if anyone would buy that. <laughs> and then I could have like a panda on the back. Oh my gosh. I'm just thinking about my non-existent merch line. Anyway, but I think it's really cool to watch the panda's behavior and they have other animal cams as well they have black-footed ferrets cheetah cubs naked mole rats elephants the panda and the lions so they have six different cams and it's really cool to watch the um behavior and you know especially people like me who are just normal people in society who only get their information about animals through going to zoos or watching like Discovery Channel or Animal Planet and things like that, where you really get to watch these cams and look at their behavior. And again, this isn't the only zoo that has these cams, but I think it's really, really fascinating and really interesting. I'm going to click on the cheetah cub cam. I just want to see if they're out. They are. Oh. So the cheetah cub cam and ferret cam and the mole rat cam are all in their little dens. And currently on the camera, there are two cheetah cubs, which is really, really cute. So I'm going to link the webcam, just the overview webcam page in my description. So you can click on any of the ones that you want to see. But currently there's cheetah cubs right now on the camera. That's really cute. I'm going to turn this off so I'm not watching this the entire time because I will literally just stare at these cheetahs the whole time. I am going to talk a little bit about the panda sanctuary that I mentioned earlier that I said I wanted to work at. So there are um, quite a few panda sanctuaries um, in China and other countries as well. So in 2017, there was a um, Daily Mail article um, says, she, is she the luckiest worker in the world? Meet the woman who makes a living by hugging, caring, and playing with pandas. So this is the panda sanctuary that I'm talking about. She works at a panda breeding center in China. She basically just like plays with these pandas all the time. And it is a, yeah, it's a research base for panda breeding. And she gets to play with panda cubs all day. It looks like the most amazing job ever. Yeah, if you just Google panda cub sanctuary, there's like, millions of pictures of people just like playing with these panda cubs and you know obviously this is like a sanctuary and like a research facility but oh that would be so fun to get to go play with pandas all day oh I would absolutely love that I will link the um research base of the giant panda I just think it's really cool and really fascinating that people from all over the world come to see these animals and the website said that millions of people have traveled to come not only just see the pandas but to come to this zoo and I'm I'm just incredibly lucky that I live in the DC area that I get to take advantage of all these really awesome opportunities um and places in the area and 
people just come from all over the world to see Washington DC and I'm just I'm very lucky I was just I was just thinking about you know how lucky I am but yeah that's everything I basically have to say about the pandas at the National Zoo and I am going to keep um, looking at the cams and you know I'll let you guys know a little bit more information in the next podcast about how the panda baby is doing and how mama's doing and um, I might be visiting the zoo they're doing limited entry and all the outside exhibits are available for visiting. You can't go inside anywhere. So I might be visiting soon. So in the next podcast, I'll let you know if I saw mama or daddy panda. Again, I will have the cams listed in the description as well as the history of the giant pandas and the research base. But thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed learning about the pandas and the history and if you didn't know about the shootings that were going on in Wisconsin I hope that that was educational and informative for you and I'm going to keep an eye on the news for more information about that as well and keep you updated in the next episode so thank you cats for listening as always stay safe stay classy and I will chat again with you soon goodbye (laughs) 